What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. Today we'll be talking about the latest stock market news along with our technical analysis thoughts on the S&P 500, NASDAQ, volatility index, Bitcoin, and of course, US dollar. The stock market has been trading strongly after the opening bell, but is something happening at the close that should have us asking questions? Let's now take a look together. Stay tuned. So yesterday, of course, was the great debate between, of course, the Democrats and the Republicans. It was pretty crazy what happened in that, of course, debate. But overall, it's an important sentiment indicator going into the election. We did see some moves in the stock market probably being placed based on who they thought won that debate and who becomes more likely to be, of course, the president of the United States. But overall, this is going to be the theme for, of course, the debates. And the election is going to play a big part of the next month, along with the Congress bill for further stimulus. This goes on top of, of course, the crisis. But overall, we didn't see too many really strong signals from the market yesterday, other than a little bit of rebalancing throughout the heat map here. What else happened, though? Well, we saw the end of the month of September. We obviously are now in October. And what does a bad month in September usually mean? Well, we made a video at the beginning on this channel of September saying it is the worst month of the year, pretty much over the last 100 years. It did decline. It was a bloodthirsty month in terms of we did see the markets turn red. But what does October bring us? So from an election year standpoint, generally September actually is slightly positive and October and November are slightly negative months. And that's just going off the last 20 to 30 years of data going into elections. When we also consider, though, the decline that happened in September, during a normal year, the following month would actually be up. And this is 70% of the time. Now, we are not in a normal year. We would all agree with that. Some of these statistics don't work. So we're going to choose to think that the decline is going to happen or we're going to choose to think that there's a positive side. Well, I think it comes down to the technical price action. And if you know that 70% of the time there's a positive month in the month after September that's declining by that amount, if we break through key resistance points, I think it's another kind of thing that helps you gain confidence in your trade if we break through key levels towards the bull side. What we're seeing though is resistance is going to be tough to break and we'll talk about that in our technical analysis a little bit later in this video. Other things that are worth noting, of course, CBOE put call ratios, we're seeing a decline in put call ratios, 1.4 over here on the SPX S&P 500 put call ratios. This is actually down from 1.5 the previous days and the 1.6 kind of 1.5 averages that we've seen over the last week. It's good if you are a bear because if you see put call ratios going up and the market's going up like it was at some points during this crisis, it becomes less likely the market's going to fall. Remember, if we had a put call ratio at two, the market is less likely going to fall because someone needs to win and someone needs to lose. And generally in my analysis, whenever put call ratios are super high, it's not necessarily a great thing for bears. It's usually good to be doing what other people aren't doing when it comes to the bearish side of the markets. Another thing that bears may be looking at is, of course, stock price breadth. We've seen that come under fire recently. And this is really important because it, the last time it got through this zero oscillator here was back during the crisis period, Feb into, of course, March. We're basically seeing right now approximately 0.55% more of each day's volume has been traded in declining issues rather than advancing issues. So it looks like there's more pressure towards the downside at this point in the market. We'll notice, of course, put call options here is still relatively low. We're not even above 0.8 yet. And this is, of course, important in this statistic when we're looking at these oscillators. Still looking at the oscillator down here in the middle of the range, we haven't gone to extreme fear levels yet. Extreme fear levels are usually a buy kind of zone. If you find a technical area at the same point, these are always the best points to, of course, buy. And we're not even at this point underneath the 40s. So we're not really seeing too much from this oscillator overall. Before we pick a winner for, of course, the competition, I just want to say thank you very much for, of course, entering and supporting the channel recently. I do appreciate all 20,000 plus subscribers out there. And I just want to thank you. So this is for 540 Australian dollars to go towards really whatever you want, but hopefully trading. And we asked that people yesterday put hashtag winner in, of course, their comment. So let's let that load now 
and we'll see how many comments we have from yesterday's video. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't already subscribed, please remember to do so. And we'll be doing a live stream this Friday for non-farm payroll. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Make sure you come and check out that event. All right, drum roll. It's time for us to pick a winner and the winner is Farad Isham. Well done, Farad. Thank you for your hard work, Tommy says. If I am the hashtag winner, I'll spend the money on KFC, your call. All right, man, if you want to do that, that's up to you. Obviously, I'd put it into potentially KFC shares. You could always do that. But thank you very much and thank you to everybody that has, of course, entered this particular prize and has supported the channel. We do appreciate each and every one of you. All right, let's get into the TA and see what's been going on there. So dollar index, I think is the best place to start as this is really gonna show a sentiment either way for the stock markets. If the dollar can hold this particular support line and bull up, I think that's gonna be quite negative to stock markets. We've seen that correlation recently. We obviously have the 9380 resistance and we spoke about yesterday, we're really boxing up between the 9380 and the previous 96 zone. So we're getting a bit of further sell pressure here on the dollar right now, but overall it needs to start to move up. See here yesterday, we got four hour closes just above that 94 kind of 10 zone. That becomes a key critical point because what we'd be seeing now is if the market came up, we'd effectively has two lows, we'd have an intervening peak and if we close through this level, that would be incredibly bullish. Not only would we go back to these highs, but that would further open the 95 and 96 zone. So it's crunch time for the dollar. It has to hold these areas. We do not want to see it under any circumstances underneath this 93.50 again. If it does that, we're back into the channel and it was really a false breakout. I'd expect a lot of movement off non-farms for this one. So of course, Friday will be a big teller for US dollar strength or weakness. On to, of course, copper. What's going on in copper right now? Well, copper's found its support at 2.95. Many longtime viewers of the channel would know that we call copper Dr. Copper and it shows us bullish strength or weakness in the market. We found support this week. We've bounced off the 50 several times and we've continued to move higher. We're about to make a new high or we have made a new high here during the Asian session. And it looks like we're gonna to try to target 3.1. This is bullish towards the market. Obviously overall, we've been pretty optimistic on the market. We had those targets of 3,200-ish for the S&P around that range. It did come down and touch that area and now it's moved up but we're still at a critical point, which we'll talk about right now. And that critical point is of course, really on the NASDAQ and S&P 500 at key zones. So firstly, the monthly close. The monthly did not close bearish underneath the previous months, of course, bullish gains. So that's pretty important. If we had a monthly close underneath here that engulfed the previous candle, that would have been incredibly bearish towards the market. And we did not see that, unfortunately for the bears. On the weekly, not much. We haven't obviously got a close yet on the weekly overall, but it looks like we're really testing these highs. Notice how we had that previous shooting star candle over here, and we're now testing the resistance point. And this becomes the important area for the NASDAQ either to go bullish or bearish at this area. If we go down to the smaller timeframes, look here at this 11, five to 11, six range. I said yesterday, 11, six is for me where I wanna see the market above. But as soon as it gets past this level, if it does do so, that is incredibly bullish. There's what I like to call a blue sky above in the market. Basically, we have no real structure resistance until the 12,400 area. So if the market ends up accumulating in this zone, breaks out and closes above the 11.6, all of a sudden we're looking for pullbacks back into this zone and longing it realistically into previous highs, if not all time new highs. Remember that stat, when the market makes a new high, especially the S&P, it usually puts on around 9% over the next 12 months. That's statistically likely. We are approaching key resistance here on the NASDAQ right now and it's so close. It's uh, pretty amazing that we're about to test this resistance so fast after last week, we we're as low as 10.7. That's how fast the markets are right now. On to the S&P 500, what's going on there? Well, the S&P 500 again did not close bearish. It found support on the previous really high levels of the body closes. That was around that 3,200. You'll notice here the real market got to about 3,216, 3,212. 
So pretty low there and then bounced off it. If we go down to a weekly, again, nice looking bullish candle. We talked about how if we end up closing up at the 3400 zone this week and we end up creating what is effectively a morning star candle formation, that would be incredibly bullish as well. So we do have a lot riding on this week. We don't have the close yet, but a morning star formation is very, very strong in the markets, especially on a weekly. So that's all coming off the 20 exponential moving average. It's all making sense to the bull side right now, but everything can change in only a few days. And we obviously have a few days left. If we go to the daily, you can see here yesterday, it went and put market pressure on the 3400 resistance. Remember between 3400 and 3420, we have an incredibly strong resistance for the bulls and the bears to be fighting it out. We basically almost found that level and strongly rejected it. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. If we go down to a four hour, we can see again, the markets come up and then it's sold off. And we go down to a one hour chart and notice this, we have selling pressure at the end of the day and buying pressure in the first couple of hours of trade. It's always important to note that selling pressure at the end of the day. The previous day, we had selling pressure at the end of the day as well. This is the real market. This is the SPX. So each one of these hour candles is when the market is open itself. Basically, we're seeing Asian session often being bullish, the market coming in, acting bullish in the morning and selling off at the end of the day. And what do we know about that on this channel? We all know that means that the bigger players are selling into the close. They're selling positions, they're rotating out of certain areas and they're putting pressure on the markets. And that's not actually a very bullish thing. We wanna be seeing generally buying at the end of the days and Friday will be a key point for this because of course, if Friday sells into the weekend, that's always a really bearish intention for the markets. The close is everything and always will be. It's a big saying on this channel and very, very important. So overall, from the technical analysis perspective, we still have that 3420 zone, 3430 zone that we want to see closed. We want to see it getting above that area. And until it gets above that area, we're not really super strong bulls over the longer term anyway. Not at this point. We just haven't seen enough. That being said, we've pretty much completed at this point. When we get to that resistance, the double bottom from down here below, that'd be great technical to have completed. And... At this point, we're really stuck in the middle of the ranges. Now, yesterday we saw the futures go underneath a key point, and that key point was this 33.30 zone. The futures went underneath this during and after the debate, but the real market never did. And this is again why you always use the real market as your real gauge. And if you're trading, you can obviously trade on the futures markets, but the real investment opportunities and decisions should always be made on the SPX and the technicals that you're seeing here. So we didn't even get a close under the 33.30. And I still remain that if we have a close underneath the 33.30, that would be bearish in intent. And we'd see something like this back into previous lows, putting pressure on the markets. So we're still in a critical point. We haven't closed to a strong resistance level. We've seen selling at the end of the day, which is pretty important. And we're really in no-go zone. It's, it's very difficult to say, oh, there's strong positions here either way. If you're looking at investing long-term, you can always be fairly strong. But overall, not much going on. When we look at the international markets, we can still see here is the ASX 200, the Australian 200 stocks, really weak across the board here in Australia. We're moving up today, but this is not the index that, of course, the S&P 500 is because we just lack tech in this index. So really, this is starting to roll over quite hard. If it doesn't find support at the 5,800, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see the ASX 200 go to 5,600, where previous resistance should act as support. It's a pretty critical zone for the markets. And at this point, it doesn't look anywhere near as strong as the American indices. What about Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin has been finding a 10K base very, very strong. If dollar index continues to decline, we have to look at the opportunity that is on Bitcoin. We've seen here that it's finding some resistance strength, but it's all about this 11.2 zone. So if we have 11,200 area closed and broken against, as in the market goes up, breaks it, closes it, and then comes down and tests it, I think 12,000 is very open here. It's a huge gap close. It's highly statistically likely, and it's always a key point that you put on your markets. And I think Bitcoin is worthwhile considering from a technical analysis perspective nowadays. It's very technical and it works really well with human psychology as well, going to round numbers. And you wanna be taking your profits usually 
a little bit before those round numbers are reached. Volatility index still finding support here at the 25 base on, of course, the volatility index for the CBOE contract. Overall, we did see a spike in volatility a little bit yesterday. This is the four hour here. So volatility is going up slightly. The markets are also going up slightly. A bit weird for that one, but that's because there's still uncertainty in. At any point in time, the market can sell off quite aggressively. Remember, we're in that no-go, kind of very tough zone between two critical points right now. So the VIX, if it continues to rise and the market rises with it, is always a negative signal. Look at that as always a bearish signal in the markets. For the week ahead, we have, of course, the unemployment figure coming out tonight. That will be relatively important because it leads into non-farms, but non-farm Friday is always one of the key points. We will be live streaming this. Come join us on the channel. And of course, we look forward to seeing you there. If you've enjoyed this video overall, please remember to smash the like button and of course subscribe and hit the alert button overall. And congratulations again to Farid on the win. Uh, hopefully you don't spend it all on KFC. That's probably not great for your health, but overall we appreciate you and your support to the channel and obviously everyone else out there. We'll see you in the next video and happy trading everyone. Bye for now.